got the horse right here. The name is Paul Rovier, and here's a guy that says if the weather's clear, can do, can do. This guy says the horse can do. If he says the horse can do, can do, can do.
because I know you two bums work for Detroit Bustin' Up customers for this crap game. We do? Yeah. Oh! Well, you can tell him for me. I know right now he's out trying to find a spot. Well, nobody's going to give him a spot because they all know Brandy and Frida down there next. Hey, fellas, I'm having terrible trouble. Everybody's scared. I'm kind of that lousy Brandy. Is there something scared. wrong, Mr. Detroit? Oh, no, Lieutenant. I hope you don't think I was talking about you. There are other lousy Brandigans. <laughs> Detroit, I was just speaking with your colleagues about your crap game. I imagine they're having trouble finding a spot. Well, the key is on, as you must know, from the fact that you and I have to live on your salary. What is that? What am I? Sex maniac? I merely run a crap game for the convenience of those who want a little action, in return for which I take a small cut. Is that a crime? Yeah. <laughs> Did you find a place for the game? Did I find a place? Did I find? Yes, I found a place. We are holding the crap game tomorrow night in the Radio City Music Hall. <laughs> Wait, but how are you going to fix the ushers? I tried all the regular places already. The back of the cigar store, the funeral parlor. You said there might be a chance once at the Billboard Garage. I was yeah. over to the Billboard Garage, spoke to Joey Billboard himself. He says he might take a chance and let me use the place. If I could give him a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks? In cash, you won't take my marker. Your mark is no good. What do you mean? A marker ain't just a piece of paper that says, I owe you one thousand dollars sign made in Detroit. A marker is like a pledge on which a guy can't vouch on. It's like not salute the flag. My marker is as good as gold. Only Joey Billboard don't think so. It doesn't seem possible. Me, without a livelihood. Why, I've been running the crap game ever since I was a juvenile delinquent. <laughs> if it isn't there something you can do? What can I do? I'm broke. I couldn't even buy Adelaide a present today. And you know what day today is? It is mine and Adelaide's 14th anniversary. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. We've been engaged 14 years. <laughs> <laughs> Concentrate on the game. Town's up to here with high players. The Greeks in town. Brandy bottle mates. Grand slam. I know I can make a fortune, but where can I have the game? The Billboard Garage wants a grand. He ain't got a grand on hand. And they've now got a lock on the door. A legitimate public school.
know where it is. Okay, Nate. Say, you know who's in town? Sky Masterson. Sky Masterson is down. Sky Masterson, now there's the highest player of them all. Higher than the Greek? Higher than anybody. Why do you think they call him Sky? That's our pie bets. I once saw him at $5,000 on a cockroach. And another time he was sick and he wouldn't take any penicillin on account that he had bet 10 C's that his temperature would go to 104. Did it? Did it. He's so lucky it went to 106. Good old son. Maybe you can borrow the thousand from Sky. Yeah. Not Sky. With him, that money ain't lending money. That's betting money. So why don't I bet him? Why don't I bet him a thousand on something? You would bet with Sky Master. I ain't scared. I am perfectly willing to take the risk, providing I can find a bet on which there is no chance of losing. He likes crazy bets. Like, which lump of sugar would a fly land on? <laughs> or, how far can you kick a piece of cheesecake? <laughs> cheesecake? Look, run into Minnie's restaurant and ask Minnie how many pieces of cheesecake he sold yesterday. Then also, how many pieces of strudel? How much cheesecake and how much strudel? What do you want to know that for? Just find out. Now, Theodore, here, here comes Saturday. If she finds out I'm running the crap game, she'll never set foot on me again. <laughs> Pigeon. You go ahead, bro. Order me a tuna fish on rye, a chocolate sundae with tomato ketchup and mayonnaise. Okay, Adelaide. We gotta get back to the hot dogs. You're still a person. Yeah, that slave driver Charlie, he's been working us all day. Finally, I says, look, Charlie, I gotta get out of here and get something to eat. And he says, you don't want to eat, you just want to eat that cheap bum, Nate and Detroit. So what did you say to him? I told him, I says, I'll meet whoever I want. Well, don't upset yourself. How's your cold? Oh, it's much better, thank you. Nathan, happy anniversary. A present. I hope you like it. About. I'm going to read the card. <clears throat> Sugar is sweet, and so is jelly, so put this belt around your belly. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet. But look, honey, about your present. I was going to give you a diamond wristwatch with a gold band and two rubies on the side. Oh, Nathan, you shouldn't have- It's all right, I did it! <laughs> I'm sorry. You know what? I kind of like it when you forget to give me presents. It makes me feel like we're married. <laughs> Don't worry, honey. One of these days I'll be in the money and you'll have more mink than a mink. Oh, Nathan, I can go without anything. Just so long as you don't start running that crap game. Crack game! <laughs> what an absurd plot! Hey! Oh, 1200 cheesecake and 1500 strudel. What? Yesterday, Mickey sold 1200 cheesecake and 15,000 strudel. Well, strudel the cheesecake, that's great! Nathan, what is this? Nothing, honey. Hey, any news yet? Not yet, Mary, I'll let you know. Okay, Detroit. Nathan, what is that about? His wife's having a baby. Oh, and why is he asking you? He's nervous, it's his first wife. <laughs> Get soggy fellows. Why don't you take this Adelaide to the drugstore? You see, you got a pool and it's just across the street, and there are a lot of open animals oh, around. Nathan, you're so thoughtful. Is this the sweetest place in Dubai? <laughs> hey, Masterson, glad to see you. Hey, Sky, and you all come on, are you? How are you, Sky? You look great. Well, I feel great, Nathan. Just spent two weeks out in Nevada. Great place, beautiful scenery, healthful climate. And I beat him for 50 G's at Blackjack. 50 G's? <laughs> uh, gonna be in town long? No, I'm flying to Havana tomorrow. Havana? Oh, yes. There's lots of action down there. You say, do you want to come with? No, I got a lot of stuff I got to do. In the meantime, how about dropping on over to Mindy's for a piece of cheesecake or something? They sell a lot of cheesecake. Uh, I'm not hungry. Say. How's that look? Oh, fine. Fine. Still dancing in the hot box. And I suppose you'll be getting married someday. I'll go sometime. Oh, but Nathan, we can fight. You know, guys like us gotta remember that as pleasant as a doll's company may be, she must always take second place to aces back to back. <laughs> sure. Uh, tell me, you're hungry yet? Maybe we can go to Mindy's for some cheesecake or strudel or something. I've got the ladies on us. Mm. Uh, but you will admit that Minnie has the greatest cheesecake in the country. <laughs> yes, I'm quite partial to Minnie's cheesecake. Oh, wait! <laughs> and yet there are some who enjoy Minnie's strudel. <laughs> now, I'll which do you think 
me some more of the cheesecake and the screw. Well, I never give it much thought, but if everybody's like I am, I'd say Mindy sells much more cheesecake than strudel. How much? What? But how much? Nathan, I never knew you to be a betting man. You always keep your percentage off the top. Well, for old times' sake, I thought I'd give you a little action. I will bet you a thousand dollars that yesterday Mindy sold more strudel than cheesecake. Nathan, let me tell you this story. No. When I was a young man about to go out in the world, my father says to me a very valuable thing. He says to me like this. Son, I'm sorry that I'm not able to bankroll you to a very large start, but having no potatoes to give you, I'll stake you to some very valuable advice. One of these days in your travels, a guy's going to come to you with a brand new deck of cards on which the seal has not yet been broken, and he will bet you that he can make the jack of spades jump out of the deck and squirt cider in your ear. But son, do not bet this man, for as sure as you are standing there, you're going to wind up with an ear full of cider. Now, man. I do not claim you've been clocking Mindy's cheese. <laughs> you don't think that However, I However, I will bet you the same thousand that you don't know the color of the necktie you have on. <laughs> well? No bet. Great. What a crazy color. Don't bother me. Guys, 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 guys! I came up with a new joke. Why do you think our butt cracks are shaped like this instead of like this? Because <laughs> if they went down the slide, they'd go boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, we took our to the front room. She said we're going to be the sure thing we're up after the show at the hot pot. And don't be late. Yes, dear. I, I mean, yes. Yes, dear. Nathan, that's husband talk if I ever heard it. You're trapped. In Adelaide, you're the kind of doll that's most difficult to unload. I don't want to unload her. I love Adelaide. And a guy without a doll. Well, if a guy does not have a doll, who would holler at Nathan, I'm not putting a rap on dolls. I just say that a guy should have them when he wants them, and they're easy to find. You're not dolls like Adelaide. Nathan, figuring way for age, all dolls are the same. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Then how come you ain't got a doll? How come you're going to a man alone without one? Well, I like to travel. But if I was to take a doll to Havana, they're the largest assortment available. Not real bad. Class dolls. Any doll. You name it. Any doll. And I name it. Well, you bet on it. Good just to talk to you people. Oh, 
You go right on talking with Sister Sarah. You'll be all right. I'm glad you found us. Well, the Bible says, seek and you shall find. Very good. I wish we could reach more sinners like you. We're out every day trying. Well, maybe you should try the night. <laughs> well, as a former sinner, I happen to know that the best time you catch sinners is between midnight and dawn. You might as well have an all-night session against them. Very good suggestion indeed. Thank you, Brother Masterson. You're welcome. <laughs> Fine woman. I suppose she sort of <coughs> looks after you. We look after each other. Uh huh. And I suppose if one of you goes someplace, the other follows. Yes, of course. Of course. Here are two pamphlets I think you should read. They will give you a good deal of comfort. Thank you. And we're holding a midnight prayer meeting on Thursday, which I am sure you'll wish to attend. I'm sure. Miss Sarah, I hope you'll not think I'm getting out of line, but I think it's wonderful to see a, a pretty dog, I mean, a nice looking lady like you, sacrificing herself for the sake of others. Staying here in this place, do you ever travel? Go anywhere? I would like to go to Africa. Well, that's a bit far. But there are a lot of wonderful places just a few hours from New York by plane. Say, have you ever been in a plane? No. It's wonderful. Here is another pamphlet I think you should read. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, I will need a lot of personal help from you. You see, my heart is as black as two feet down a wolf's gullet. <laughs> I'll be speaking in the Thursday prayer meeting. I need private lessons. <laughs> Why don't we have dinner or something? I think not, Mr. Masterson. Sorry, just blossoming under the warmth of your kindness. <laughs> hey, that's not right. What's not right? Well, that's not Proverbs, it's Isaiah. <laughs> it's Proverbs. Sorry, no peace unto the wicked. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 22. Isaiah? Isaiah. There are two things been in every hotel room in this country. Sky Masterson. <laughs> and the Gideon Bible. I must have read the good book ten or twelve times. You've read the Bible twelve times? What's wrong with the Bible? Besides, in my line of work, the strangest information frequently comes in handy. You know. I once won five G's on a parlay Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> Mr. Masterson, why are you here? I told you, I'm a sinner. You're lying! Well, lying's a sin. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm a big sinner. If you get me, it's eight to five, the others will follow. <laughs> you do need sinners, don't you? We're managing. Sister Sarah, let's be honest. This mission's laying an egg. Why don't you let me help you? I'll bet I can fill this place with sinners. I don't bet. Then I'll make you a proposition. When is this big meeting of yours? Thursday? I guarantee to fill that room with one dozen genuine sinners. And I guarantee that they will sit still and listen to you. And what's my end of the garden? Have dinner with me. Why do you want to have dinner with me? Because I'm hungry. <laughs> What's this? Sky Masterson's marker for 12 sinners. If you don't think it's good, ask anybody in town. I owe you one dozen sinners. And I'll pick you up at noon tomorrow for dinner. At noon? Well, it'll take us time to get there. To get where? To my favorite restaurant. Where is that? El Cafe Cubano. In Havana. El Cafe Cubana in Havana? Well, where do you want to eat? Howard Johnson's? Havana? Why not? The plane gets us there in five hours and back the same night. And the food is great. I now realize, Mr. Gambler, that when you were describing the blackness of your heart, 
You did not do yourself justice. And I now realize, Sister Sarah, that no matter how beautiful a sergeant is, she's still a sergeant. Please go away. Why don't you change your pitch, Sarge? Come to the mission, one and all. Except guys. I hate guys. I don't hate them. Except me. I'm relieved to know that's just me personally, and not all guys in general. It's nice to know that somewhere in the world there's a guy who might appeal to the sergeant. I wonder what this guy would be like. He will not be a gambler. I'm not interested in what he will not be. I'm interested in what he will be. Don't worry. I'll know. For I
what? The crap game. The what? The crap game. Wait a minute. I got a customer. Hurry up. Hurry up. That'll be eight dollars. What did you say, they The crap game! Don't say that on the phone. Suppose the cops are listening. I'm sorry. The dice game. Well, Joey, is it all right if I use your place tomorrow night? If I get a thousand bucks... I'll have it tomorrow. Then call me tomorrow. Look, Joey, if you're gonna take that attitude with me, I'll have the game someplace else. Then have it someplace else. Well, where else can I have it? <laughs> Joey, the door is guaranteed. Would I lie to you? Yes. I'm getting it from Sky Masterson. How do you know? It's a bet. I, I can't lose. I definitely could not take a dollar to a man. Why couldn't you? Uh, because she ain't the kind of doll that goes to a man. Where does she go? She don't go no place. That's why I know I'm gonna win. <laughs> don't be so sure. It ain't a horse, it's a dog. But Joey... Nate, there'll be no crap game here tomorrow unless I get my dough in advance. Joey, you've known me for a long time. That's why I want it in advance. <laughs> Well, I can't talk no more. I gotta go meet Adelaide at the Hot Pockets. Just one thing. Can I at least tell the guys that the game is gonna be at your place? Not till I get the dog. Okay, you'll get it. Goodbye. Goodbye. I hope you get stabbed by a Studebaker. <laughs> I told 
hold them a long time. And I thought I would run a kind of museum if you would hardly any clothes on, which is what I usually wear. So you said bring this book because it might be due to psychology. You haven't got that, have you? kind of guy that you wouldn't think she would do so? I know me, for instance. There are certain dolls you can almost bet they wouldn't go for certain guys. Nathan, no matter how terrible a fellow seems, you can never be sure a girl won't go for him. Take us. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, Nathan, darling, starting next week I'll be getting this race. And you know, I was wondering, well, with what I'll be making, Maybe we could finally get married. Well, of course we're going to sooner or later. I know, Nikki, but I'm starting to worry about my mother. Your mother? What about your mother? Well, Nikki, you see, this is something I never told you before, but my mother, back in Rhode Island, she thinks we're married already. <laughs> and why would she think a thing like that? I couldn't be engaged for 14 years, could I? People don't do that in Rhode Island, they get married. But why is it such a small state? <laughs> so, you see, I wrote you I was married. You did, huh? Uh-huh. And then after about two years... What after about two years? We had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> you told your mother we had a baby? My mother would have understood if we hadn't. What type of baby was it?
off a moose at mating time. <laughs> Just so long as he can pick up to Havana. Havana? He couldn't take this phone to New Rochelle. <laughs> Where's Nate? You ought to stop setting up the game. I don't know. Those times the Adelaide did it. She's that, mad at him. That's just Adelaide. Always taking his mind off of Honest Boy. Yeah, it's too bad a smart businessman like me has to go and fall in love with his own fiance. But that is his weakness, and we must be tolerant, for I am told it's a worldwide weakness. Look. <laughs>
something I'd like to speak to you about. Won't you come in? Have some lunch with us? No, I don't have time. I have several other calls to make. Now, Sarah, we at headquarters have come to a definite conclusion. We've decided to close this branch of the mission. Oh, no! Close the mission? But, General, please, someone can do good here, even if I can't. Sarah, there are so many who call on us, and so many places where our work is really needed. But we're doing much better. We've announced a big meeting for tomorrow night. You've announced a meeting. But will anybody come? Will anybody be there? Pardon me, I couldn't help you over here. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Tell me, Nathan, when's the happy day? When will it be, Nathan? Well, Nathan, these good fellows are nice enough to give you a bachelor, then you should at least tell them the wedding day. Well, we need time for a license and our blood test. Gee, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get married tomorrow night, right after the hot box? Adelaide, we need time for a license. You could elope. What? You could drive down to Maryland. What's the name of that town? Uh, uh, the Pimlico. No, not Pimlico. Oh. No, Nathan, out to me. They'll marry you right away. They don't ask for a blood test. Ain't that unhealthy? <laughs> Oh. Mm -hmm. 
hurry if we want to catch the plane back to New York. I don't want to go back to New York. Well, I'm taking you back. You're no gentleman. Look, a doll like you should be mixed up with a guy like me anyway. It's no good. I'm no good. You know how I met you in the first place? I made a bet. That's how I met you in the first place. I made a bet. How else could a girl get to me to gamble? Come on. No! I gotta think what's no. best for you. Oh, you talk just like a missionary. <laughs>
I've seen a lot of strange things in my time, but this is the first time I've ever seen a fucking crap game go on full blast in a mission. Crap game? Sarah, you know I have nothing to do with this, don't you, Sarah? This 